Good day everyone and welcome back to my virtual classroom. For our Maths Easy episode for today, we will be learning ratio and proportion. So let's get started. For today is about ratio and proportion. So what is a ratio? A ratio is a comparison of two numbers. Ratio can be written in three different ways. It can be written as A to B or A is to B or A over B. Because the ratio is a fraction, your B cannot be equal to zero. Ratio are expressed in simplest form. Now, how to use ratio? For example, if you are being told that the ratio of boys and girls in the class is 12 to 11. This means for every 12 boys, you can find 11 girls to match. Therefore, you could also say if there are 24 boys, that means that you will have 22 girls. How do we simplify ratio? Ratios are being simplified when there is no more common factor between your fractions or your numerator and denominator. For example, you have 12 cats and 6 dogs. So you have a ratio of 12 is to 6 or 12 over 6. So how do we simplify this? We simplify by dividing both the numerator and the numerator and the denominator by their greatest common factor which is 6. So we divide both by 6 you will have 2 over 1 or 2 is to 1. Let's have a few examples. Joseph, Joseph's flock has 55% more sheep than goats. What is the ratio of goats to sheep in the flock? That means that, what is the ratio of your goats to your sheep? That means, let's say for example, you have 100% of your goat, your sheep will be 155. So that's 100 is to 155. Now you have to simplify this, so we will divide this by the common or the greatest common factor, which is 5. 100 divided by 5 is 20. 155 divided by 5 is 31. Therefore, the ratio is 20 is to 31. Another example for your ratio. A person's arm is 80 centimeter. He is 2 meters tall. Find the ratio of the length of his arm to his total height. Now, when you do this, first thing that you have to understand with regards to ratio is when we compare, both should have the same units. So it's either you will have centimeter or you will have meters, but it cannot be a centimeter and a meter at the same time. So your arm to your, to your height, let's convert both to centimeter, will be 80 centimeter over 200 centimeter. Once we have the same units, then we can simplify them. So 80 over 200, this will be divided by the common, which is 40. So you will have 2 over 5 which means that the ratio between the person's arm and his height will be 2 is to 5. Now we have two different types of proportion. Now when we say proportion, by the way, a proportion is an equation that equates to ratio. So for example, A is to B equals c is to d so that is a proportion so we have two types we have direct proportion and inverse proportion 
So if we say the ratio of dogs and cats was 3 is to 2, this is equal to the ratio of dogs and cats, which is 6 is to 4. So that means that we have a proportion. Now the thing with proportion is that there is a property called cross product property where you can cross this to check whether it is indeed a direct proportion. So 3 times 4 equals 6 to 12 is to 12. That means that it is proportionate. In other way of doing this is if you have A over B equals C over D, when you cross this, you will have AD equals BC. This is your means and this is your extremes. If one quantity goes up by a certain percentage, the other quantity goes up by the same percentage as well. That is what we call by proportion. For example, the mass of 16 ml of your neogenium is 45, 24, sorry, 24 grams. What is the mass of 20 ml of the same element? All right. So we have your 16 ml is to 24. This is equal to the mass of 20 ml is to unknown. So you have 16 to your 24, or we can write this as well as 24 over 16 as long as the same unit will be on the same part of your ratio. So 24 over 16, and you have x over 20. We can do that as well. So if you have this type, it will be extreme multiplied by your mean. Or if we have the fraction type, you just need to cross multiply. So this will be 24 divided by 16 times 20 equals x. So again, the same unit should be on the same part of your fraction. So 24 divided by 16 times 20 is 30 grams. That means that when it is 20 ml of the same element, you will have 30 grams. Another example. If it takes three men five hours to dig 12 holes, how many hours does it take for three men to dig 84 holes? Now, this is the same number of men. If five hours is to 12 holes, how many hours will it take for 84 holes? So you just need to write this as extreme or mean. Or you can write this as 5 over 12 equals x over 84. Cross 5 divided by 12 times 84 equals x. So 5 divided by 12 times it by 84, you will have 35 hours. That means that for the same number of men to dig 84 holes, they need 35 hours to do it. Another example. Ian wants to make a baked Alaska. He requires 24 eggs to make 700 grams of the pudding. How many eggs does he require for 100 for 1250 grams? So we write it as 24 eggs is to 700 grams. That is equal to an unknown egg is to 1250. So we can write this as 
24 over 700 equals x over 1250. Cross, you will have 24 over 700 times 1250 will be the number of eggs that you will have. Can you try to answer the question? So when you solve this question, 24 divided by 700 times 1250, you will get a decimal value, which is 42.86x. Now, since we are talking about eggs, eggs cannot be in decimal form. Therefore, you just need to round this up to a whole number, which means that you need 43 eggs to make 1,250 grams of your pudding. I hope that you have learned something. Thank you and see you next time. I hope that you have learned something new today and if you do, please don't forget to click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell for your attendance today. And as always, as Teacher Maria would say, please do live your life to the fullest, learn something new every day and love one another as how our God loves us. See you next episode for our Maths Easy series. Bye!